Hey guys! Okay, so today's video I'm really excited about. I'm going to be sharing with you makeup techniques that completely changed the game for me. And some of these are really simple, but I feel like once I started doing these things, I kind of leveled up in my makeup skills. And so I wanted to share them with you. I love doing makeup technique focused videos rather than product focused videos because this way you can practice these things using what you already own. You don't need to have a specific set of products to do these things. You don't have to have the same products that I'm using. So let's just get right into it. All right, so I'm gonna start off by priming my face with the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. Love a gripping primer. That's usually the type of primer that I opt for because I feel like it makes the biggest difference extending the longevity of my makeup. I'm applying my primer to just moisturize skin. I don't have sunscreen on because the sun has already gone down and I've just been inside all day. So if I'm inside all day, I don't really bother to put sunscreen on because we don't really get any direct sunlight in our apartment anyway. If you are wearing sunscreen though, I would actually recommend applying your primer underneath your sunscreen. Let it sink in, then apply your sunscreen. Let that sink in for a good 10-15 minutes, then go in with your makeup. If you want to use a primer over your sunscreen, there's a chance it might move the sunscreen around or kind of lift it up and make it less effective at protecting your skin. But if you do that, just try to tap it in rather than rubbing it in. That way you're disrupting your sunscreen as little as possible. Okay, so now that my primer has had a chance to dry down a little bit, now I'm gonna go in with foundation. And I'm actually gonna be using a relatively full coverage foundation. This is the Physicians Formula Butter Believe It foundation, which I've been loving, but this has been my biggest lesson that I've learned with foundation over the past, I would say, year or so. You don't need to put the same amount of foundation all over your face. What are the areas of your face that you want more coverage? For me, it's my cheeks. Really, like, this part of my cheeks is where I do have some kind of post-acne redness. So that's the main part of my face that I'm going to target when I apply my, my foundation. And then what are the parts of your face where you feel like the foundation tends to look textured or where does it crease throughout the day. I often will get settling into my smile lines and also this part of my face, coincidentally, I don't really have much to cover there. So when I apply my foundation, I'm going to intentionally avoid this area. That's really my problem area. That's where foundation usually starts to look bad as the day goes on. So I'm gonna take a really less than a full pump I probably just took like two thirds of a pump there. That's really all I need. From there, I'm just going to take the foundation and start to dot it around the parts of my face where I do want the most coverage. I want really just a little bit on my forehead, a little bit on my nose, a little bit on my chin. So then I'm gonna go in with my sponge. I still haven't even used that full dollop yet and just start blending out in those areas. So at the very end, once all that foundation is used up, I'm just gonna take my sponge and whatever residual foundation is left on there, and I'm just gonna go over the areas that I left blank. This way, the foundation is still, it still looks even and blended all over my face, but because I have such a small amount right here in my smile lines, I am able to avoid creasing much, much better than if I had just applied the same amount there as I did over here. This I have found is the best way to avoid creasing in the smile lines because ultimately the less product you use there, the less product that's going to be able to collect in those fine lines. So next for concealer, I'm just going to go in with my Kosas Revealer. I have pretty dark circles, so I actually do use a fair amount of concealer. I feel like that's just how I get the best coverage. And a concealer that's lightweight enough, like this Kosas one, or like the NYX Serum Concealer, the Urban Decay Stay Naked, those are my favorites. I feel like I can get away with using more because these concealers are pretty lightweight to begin with, um, and I don't find that they look overly heavy. Whenever I'm gonna be using cream cheek products, sometimes I feel like if I apply them after I've blended out my concealer, some of my concealer kind of gets lifted up and I like to really set my concealer with powder right away, like after I've blended it. So I'm actually going to let this concealer sit for a little while. And this can also help your concealer have a little bit more coverage if you kind of just let it sit there for a minute or so. Um, if it's a really fast setting concealer, you wouldn't want to do that. But 
if it's a creamy one like this Kosas one, that can help really bump up the coverage. So I'm just gonna let that concealer sit for a minute while I apply my cream cheek products. So I'm going in with my Oma contour stick. Another thing, I feel like I have way more tips now that I'm doing my makeup than I did when I wrote them out. But one thing I really like to do with contour is to put it higher up. So right here, when you kind of make a fish face, that shows you where the hollows of your cheeks are. And traditionally that's kind of where you're taught to put your contour, but I like to put it up a little bit higher than that. So I'm really targeting it right here so that it ends where the hollows of my cheeks are, but I don't want it to go any lower than that, otherwise I feel like it drags my face down. And then I also bring it up to my forehead. I'm also going to go ahead and apply my cream blush before I blend out my concealer. I'm just using the same brush that I used for contour because they're going to blend together anyway. Some of this might mix with the concealer a little bit, and that's totally fine. And with blush, I really like to put this really high up on my cheeks. I feel like that gives me a really lifted effect. So just above where I applied the contour, that's where I'm applying my blush. And I'm not quite done blending out the blush, but I'm gonna go ahead and blend out my concealer now. And I really like blending out my concealer with a brush lately. I do feel like that retains more coverage, whereas a sponge kind of tends to soak up some of the coverage. I still like using a sponge though, it just kind of depends on the day and what I'm going for. Now I want to take my blush brush again and just finish blending that out, making sure that it's seamlessly blended into the concealer. There are so many different blush placements you can do that can totally change your entire makeup look. Um, I like to switch it up day to day too. Some days I like to you know, put it all the way across my nose. I usually will take whatever's left on my brush and just kind of go over the bridge of my nose just so things look nice and blended. But depending on the day, sometimes I go heavier on the nose, especially if it's like the summertime and I want to look really warm and sun-kissed. My personal favorite way to apply blush is higher up on the cheekbones, almost where you would apply your highlighter. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to take my sponge and just kind of tap it right where that ends, just so that it looks blended. So all my cream cheek products are on. Now it is time to set my face. I have really come to prefer a loose setting powder on the under eyes. I just feel like it looks less heavy. It, it doesn't look as dry as a lot of pressed powders do. And the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, which is what I'm going to use now, incredible. Um, yeah, best loose powder that I personally have ever tried. So I've just tapped some of that into the cap and now I'm just going to work it into my brush. I like to get it nice and worked in there and then just tap off the excess. Now before I go to blend out my concealer I want to make sure that I have tapped out any of the creases that may have developed. So for me my deepest fine lines are the ones that are like right below my lower lash line so that's where my concealer tends to collect but before I set my under eyes I want to make sure that there's no product already collecting in those fine lines because then if I set it, I'm essentially setting those <laughs> creases into place. And as I'm tapping this powder in, I'm going to look up, which helps to just smooth out the fine lines a little bit so that I can get an even layer of powder all over and then I'm not missing any of those fine lines. And as far as the amount of powder to use, I actually like to use kind of not a ton of powder, but just enough to make sure that there's no tackiness under my eye. I really don't like for there to be any... I, I, I want to feel like my concealer is completely set into place. I don't like the feeling of my skin being a little bit tacky, especially because on me at least, concealer that's not adequately set fades so quickly for some reason. For the rest of my face, I can go either way as far as loose versus pressed powder, but I'm going to use my Kosas Cloud Set Powder since this is what I'm trying to use up right now. So Sigma actually just sent me a PR package. I haven't been the biggest fan of Sigma's brushes, but they sent me a bunch of brushes that I haven't tried before, including quite a few eye brushes, which I'm excited to try because I really haven't tried very many of their eye brushes. It's mainly the face brushes that I don't love. But I'm going to try out this, no that's a bronzer brush, let me see. I'm going to try out this F12 setting powder brush for my face, just see how it, how it works. I like to use a smaller brush a lot of the times to set my face, especially when I've used cream cheek products because I don't really like to put 
powder over my cream products because then I feel like it kind of covers them up. Unless I've gone too heavy handed with my blush, sometimes I will go over that with a powder to kind of diffuse it. But because I don't have super oily skin as it is, I really prefer to just target my powder in specific areas. So really the forehead, the note, just the T-zone basically is where I usually will target the powder. I do like to take away any shine on my forehead because it makes it look smoother. Same with the nose, especially this area right here. Once I've set it with powder, it starts to look much better. <laughs> I don't like having a whole lot of light bouncing off of this spot because I do have quite a few visible pores there. Some under my chin. And I am going to set the smile lines. This is a tip I learned from some of you guys. So you can kind of blow up your cheeks like a puffer fish like that to smooth out the fine line before you set it. Looks silly, but it works. <laughs> and then I also like to take some powder right here, just to clean up any contour that may have drifted down too far. So this brush worked well. This is kind of like a larger version of the kind of brush I would use to set my under eyes, which is usually something kind of this size and shape. Yeah, but I kind of like that bigger version, and I, I do feel like it did a pretty good job. Um, usually my biggest complaint with Sigma brushes is that the bristles are too slick. For highlighter, my number one tip with highlighter, I am a powder highlighter stan. Like, <laughs> I don't really use cream highlighters, I just, I, I prefer to go in with my powder highlighter after I've already finished the rest of my face, just as kind of like a finishing touch to the look. And my favorite type of brush to use for highlighter is a big, fluffy, diffused brush. This is the EcoTools Soft Highlight Brush. Any kind of really, it, you can see it's pretty floppy. It has a lot of give and it's just perfect for lightly dusting the powder highlighter. So I'm going to use this Sigma highlighter in Sizzle. This was another one of the products they sent me and I just kind of lightly tap it on there. The placement of the highlighter is also very important. If I were to draw a straight line down from the outer corner of my eye, I don't want my highlighter going any further in than that because once the highlighter drifts any further in, it, it's a textured mess. So I actually will start my brush basically in the outer corner of my eye. And you can even hold your finger here to kind of train yourself to do this if you're trying to get in this habit, but I just will swirl my brush. Let it, you know, let it touch the temples, let it, you know, basically just dust it all along there in kind of circular motions. I find that when I target my brush in the outer corner of my eye, some of the bristles are going to land down here. So I don't actually bring my brush down here. I keep it up here and just really dust it on there. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but hopefully you see what I mean. So... Again, focusing my brush out here. So this way when you look at me head on, you can't really see my highlighter. You don't see any shiny metallic highlighter on my face, but as I turn my face, that's when you start to see it. And that's what you want. You want it to kind of be a little bit of a surprise, like now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it, now you don't. That's my favorite way to do highlighter. Then I will take whatever's left on my brush and, and dust it to the tip of my nose. I know this is controversial, some people absolutely despise when people highlight their nose, but I really like it. Sometimes I'll even take a little bit more. Now, you don't want to go in with too much because then it's going to be obvious, but just, just the smallest amount of highlighter, I just think it looks so cute. So yeah, I like doing that. Take it or leave it, but I do, I do enjoy a little nose highlighter. All right, I zoomed you in because we are moving on to the eyes now. I always use an eyeshadow primer and I highly recommend it really to everyone, but if you have any trouble with your eyeshadow creasing or fading throughout the day, an eyeshadow primer is a must. Some people will just use concealer for their eyeshadow primer. If that works for you, great. For me, it does absolutely nothing because I do have very creasy eyelids. And you really only need a small amount. Tap it all over from your lid all the way up to your brow bone. So for the brows, my personal favorite way to do my brows these days is just using a tinted brow gel. Usually that's all I do. Sometimes I'll add in a little bit of pomade or brow pen after the brow gel just to finish things off. And this tip I learned from Lauren May Beauty, who I 
absolutely adore. I will link her channel below. Recently in a video when she was doing her brows, she said that she likes to start with her brow gel in the middle of her brows, kind of at the arch. So that's where I'm going to start it because that's where I want the most definition. I don't want the front of my brows to be very dark or blocky. So to me, this tip is perfect. So I start out with it in the arch, then I pull it out onto my tail. Another tip is if the brush of your brow gel is too thick for your tail, turn it this way, almost like you're using it like a pencil. That way, just use the point to brush through the tail of your brows. That gives you a lot more control. Works so much better. Then, once I've done that, I will go into the front of my brow to finish things off. At least for me, I like having more definition in the arch and tail of my brow, and then a little bit less definition in the front. So this is perfect. This is the NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Gel, by the way. I love this. I never used to fill in my brows with brow gel until I found this product. It doesn't have to be this product. I think really the key is just a brow gel that is pigmented enough to actually fill in your brows. And if you already have a decent amount of brow hair, I feel like this is the most kind of natural looking way. But even if you're using some other type of brow product, like a brow pencil or pen or pommy, I still think it's really helpful to start in the middle and the tail of the brow and then finish with the front of the brow. So that is my brows with just the brow gel. Once I'm done with the rest of my look, I might decide to go in with a little bit more of my pomade, but for now, really happy with the way that looks. So notice I applied my eyeshadow primer before I did my brows. That's because I usually like to let my eye primer set before I start applying my eyeshadows. Um, if the primer is still a little bit wet on your eyelids, or it hasn't fully set into place, sometimes it can make blending a little bit more difficult. Alright, so a lot of my biggest tips today actually pertain to eyeshadow. Eyeshadow is one of those areas where I feel like I'm always trying to improve and like level up, and lately I feel like I've gotten into a really good place with eyeshadow. So I'm actually going to be playing with the Sigma Ambiance palette for the first time today. This is a palette I've actually been kind of intrigued by recently. I, a year ago, I would have had no interest in this palette, but lately I've been very into brown eyeshadow, like brown smoky eye looks. All right, I'm actually going to use the brush that it came with, and I'm going to start with this shade Basque. I like to start with my mattes first, then my shimmers, and I typically will start out the look with my lighter crease shade or my transition color, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to tap into this shade right here called Basque. Usually for my skin tone, I'm going for a light to mid-toned matte shade. That I'm just going to blend in in circular motions, and I always start my brush here and then work it in, because this is where I want the most pigment to be. I don't know why I'm holding this up. This is where I want the most pigment to be, and wherever you start your brush is where the most color payoff is going to happen. Another thing to pay attention to as you're blending out your eyeshadows, if you have hooded eyes, even if your eyes are only hooded a little bit, like my eyes aren't fully hooded, but when I open my eyes, you can't see all of my crease color. So I do like to start out with my eye like mostly closed, but I always make sure to blend it so that even when my eyes are open, you can still see that shade. And I've also, I used to be like really afraid of bringing my eyeshadow too far up into my brow bone. I don't worry about that anymore because, um, I don't know, it's just, it doesn't, it isn't a huge concern <laughs> I've found. Like, don't be afraid to diffuse it close to your brow. Don't like apply a ton of like a deeper color up here. But if you start in your crease and then slowly diffuse it upward, bringing your brush in circular motions up into this area just helps it look more diffused. And notice how long this is taking also. <laughs> Normally, like, when I'm editing a video, I'm not going to leave all of the blending process in because that would take up way too much time and people will get bored, but good blending takes a while. Also notice I'm going back and forth between each eye. Um, I'm not doing one eye and then the other. This way I can make sure that it looks symmetrical. Another thing to keep in mind is most people's eyes are not completely symmetrical. By going back and forth between each eye, you're making sure that the bigger picture at least looks as symmetrical as possible. And I like to have uh, like a mirror like this in front of me, kind of, you know, a couple feet in front of me. But then often, as I'm doing my eyeshadow, I'll also use 
a handheld mirror, like either the mirror that the palette comes with or any other mirror that I have in my makeup collection, I'll just hold that up closer. And that way I can see what it looks like both from up close and from a little bit of a distance. Okay, so now that that one crease color is in place, next I'm going to use a deep brown matte. I'm going to use the shade Enrich, and I'm using a small pencil brush. This is the BK Beauty 210. You can see it's a really nice small pencil brush. Anything like this works great. Another good one is the EcoTools Liner Smudge Brush, which is from their, I think it's called like their Lux brush set. But any kind of small stubby brush that comes to a little bit of a point is going to be perfect. I'm going to dip into that shade and once again thinking about where I want the most definition, I want the most defined place to be my outer corner of my upper lash line. So that's where I'm going to place my brush first. And I am just lightly smudging this above my lash line. And this is where having your close-up mirror becomes helpful. After I've gotten it placed there, I will start to drag my brush up a little bit higher. And you know, everyone's eye shape is different, so just play around and figure out what looks best on you. But I never want my eyeshadow to go out any farther or any lower than right here. So you can kind of take your brush and really making a line from the outer corner of my eye to the very tip of the tail of my brow. That is really like the boundary <laughs> that I'm working with. I don't want my eyeshadow to come out any farther. This way I'm getting a very nice lifted look. If I bring it out further, sometimes it can kind of drag my eyes down and I don't want that. So I am literally just taking a tiny bit of this dark shadow at a time, really little by little. I'm just adding a little bit more. And again, I'm mostly doing this with my eye open because I want to make sure that it looks good when my eyes open, not just when my eyes closed. And I'm sort of wedging it up into the crease. See how I feel about these Sigma mattes. I have a Sigma Enchanted palette. The mattes in there are kind of difficult to work with, but that's the only Sigma palette I've tried. So I'm kind of curious to see how this one is. My favorite thing to do with this sort of pencil brush is to almost create like a wing. So I'm using just a very small amount of pressure with this and kind of dragging my eyeshadow out to a nice big like blown out wing. Now I'm going to go over to this side. You can see how this nice precise brush is great for creating like a soft yet sharp wing out here. And I'm not bringing this really any further in than my pupil. And now I'm just kind of going back and forth between each eye again making sure it looks good both up close and far away, and making sure that each side looks about as symmetrical as possible. <laughs> now that I'm pretty happy with how that looks, I'm gonna take my fluffier crease brush, the one I started with, and just blend a little bit more above the crease. Also using this to blend out any skippy areas of that dark brown. I do feel like this dark brown went on a teeny bit patchy, which has been the case for me with a lot of the Sigma mattes in Enchanted. You can see it's a little skippy. I'm just going to try to even that out. Okay, that's better. Picking up a little bit more of that lighter brown that we used before and just using that to blend these two browns together. All right, I don't always do this, but this is one of my favorite ways to really make your shimmers pop and look extra just foiled and shimmery and dimensional is to take a little bit of a glitter primer. This is the NYX Glitter Primer Glitter Glue little dab of that between two fingers. Um, I even got a little too much, so I'm tapping off some on the back of my hand. And I'm just tapping that on this inner part of my eye where I haven't really applied any shadow yet. That is where my shimmers are going to go. All right, I really want to try this shimmer. This is called Marigold. This looks so pretty. But I did swatch it earlier and it seemed a little sheer, like almost a topper, but I'm thinking that over the glitter primer it might look more intense. So, I like to just apply my shimmers with my finger. Ooh, yes. To me, I just get the best, most intense application with my fingers. Oh, that is so pretty. 
This I'm applying to the center of my lid and I'm letting it overlap a little bit with the brown. The reason I do my mattes and especially my dark brown outer corner before my shimmers is because I almost want that brown shade to kind of fade into nothing. I don't want you to be able to see where that shade begins. So I'm letting my shimmer overlap just ever so slightly with that brown, not too much, but just so that it fades completely seamlessly. All right, then I really like to do two shimmers, one in the middle and then one on the inner third. And I usually like to go from lightest to deepest. So the other shimmer I'm gonna use is this one. This is Firefly. Ooh, these shimmers feel so silky. Okay, so this is gonna be, is this, wait a second. Let me make sure this is gonna work. Yeah, see these shimmers, don't swatch very impressively at all with no glitter primer. Um, I actually think that's too deep. I actually changed my mind. I don't want to do Firefly. I want to do Luster on the inner, inner third of my eye. I think that one's going to be a little bit lighter. Yeah. Ooh. So far, really liking just the overall vibe of this palette. Like, I'm really digging the undertones of these shadows. That sort of warm but not orange color. Really liking that. Okay. The mattes were not my favorite, and I do feel like these two, like, those two shimmers, Firefly and Marigold, swatch very unimpressively, but over a glitter primer, they look incredible. It really brings out a very high-end glimmer that I, I really like. All right, so my eye look is pretty much done. Sometimes I will take just a little bit more of that deepest brown and kind of redefine just the lash line, blend a little more with my crease brush with no additional shadow on it. And then the final step I like to do is to take a matte color that is around my skin tone or just a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go into this Daze shade here and just sweep a little bit of that, a really small amount, right underneath my brow bone. Lately, I haven't been doing a brow bone highlight as much as I used to. I really just like letting my matte crease colors sort of blend into my brow bone. But another thing I like to do with this sort of shade is just kind of clean up right here, sort of sweep it. It just makes everything look nice and sharp. And any other areas where you feel like you need to diffuse things. Sometimes I'll even take some right here. And you can also do that sort of step with just your face powder. I'm just going to take whatever is left of that brown shade on this pencil brush and bring it down to my lower lash line. And this I'm going to kind of connect to the wing up here. And this I really just like to focus in the outer half of my lower lash line. I don't like to bring it in too far, but depending on your eye shape, you might like to bring it in farther. Um, I just feel like for me, sometimes my eyes can look a little bit closed off or like too sunken in. Just really softly adding some definition there. I don't like to go too heavy on my lower lash line usually. This shade right here, I'm not going to wear it today, but this candlelight shade, that looks so pretty. I cannot wait to wear that all over my lid. So far, pretty happy. As usual, even though that deep matte was pigmented, nice and pigmented, it was a little bit tricky to blend. It was a little skippy and patchy, but the end result that I got, I really like. Um, but yeah, I don't usually love deep Sigma mattes. That seems to be <laughs> the case for me. Whoa. All right, I don't know why I have this like red spot here. Like, I don't know if I was scratching it. I don't think I was, but I wasn't gonna do winged liner, but I, I wanted to show this tip, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, so I'm using, I'm actually using a pencil liner here. This is the CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus liner in espresso nice dark brown. So this I am just going to smudge in the outer part of my upper lash line, really not taking it any further in than the middle. I'm not tight lining, but I'm keeping it as close to the lashes as I possibly can. I'm not drawing a wing with the pencil itself. Next I'm going to take an angled liner brush. I'm going to try out for the first time this Sigma EO6. I am going to pick up just a little bit more of my eyeliner onto the brush. And this same principle as with the eyeshadow, I'm going to start out with my eyes open because I want to make sure that the eyeliner looks good when my eyes are open. That's really, I feel like that's really the key. 
because if it looks good when your eyes are open, it's going to look good when your eyes are closed, but the opposite is not always true. <laughs> kind of following that same line, that imaginary line from the outer corner of my eye to the tail of my brow, and starting to really gently draw a line. Now, before I go any further with that, I'm going to start the other side. I found that this way, just going little by little back and forth is going to make for the most symmetrical look possible. And you can kind of take your fingernail and clean up if you mess up. That's a nice thing about a pencil. Okay, going back and forth because this way I can make sure that the wings are at about the same angle. Also just smoothing over that whole line with the brush. So now that I've kind of got my initial line drawn, I'm going to pick up some more liner on my brush and now I'm going to finally close my eye and connect the entire wing and just filling it in. And that is my favorite way to do it. All right, I am just going to take a little bit of my ABH Dip Brow Pomade and fill in this sort of like bald spot right here. Alright, so I put some mascara on. As I often do, I got a little bit up here on my eyelid. I'm going to let that completely dry, and then I'll be able to flick it off with a spoolie. Alright, so the last tip I have is how to tastefully overline your lips if you want to. Now, I know not everyone is team overlining of lips, but I at least have a smaller upper lip than bottom lip, so sometimes I like to just even things out a little bit, and this is how I do it without making it look too over the top. I'm taking just a nice neutral light brown lip liner. This is the Koki lip liner in Nude. Look at how close I am to finishing this. This is by far my most used lip liner. I'm going to have to get a replacement of it soon. But I start out in the Cupid's bow and I'm actually going to connect both points of my Cupid's bow. I'm going to draw over that. Connecting those, so I'm creating kind of like a smooth straight line here and then bringing that down. So now I'm going to kind of redraw my cupid's bow just a tiny bit higher, very slightly higher. I'm just going to create a new point. And that is about it. And I like to take the liner just in like these outer corners and then sort of blend it inward and I'm kind of taking my finger and sort of pulling it up just a little bit and from there you can just very very slightly overline these outer parts of your upper lash line. The key is just to not go up too far and so you want to start by just redrawing your cupid's bow and then bringing it a little bit out from there. Now for my lower lip I'm not going to overline because this lip is already bigger than my upper lip, so I'm just going to draw the line where my lip naturally hits. Again, just really focusing the liner out here in these outer corners, and then blending. All right, from there, I'm just going to use a nude lipstick. I'm using the Urban Decay Vice Lipstick in Liar. This is in my Shop My Stash right now. It's just a nice, warm nude. And that, I'm kind of just focusing in the center of my lips. I don't want to completely cover up that lip liner. I'd like for there to be a little bit of a gradient. And I'm just going to blend that with my finger as well. Take my lip liner again and just kind of... And there it is. So I just feel like that kind of evens out my upper and lower lip without making it super obvious that I've just overlined my lips. I think it still looks pretty natural. All right, let's get rid of this mascara. I'm just taking a spoolie and lightly flicking that away. And this really shouldn't disrupt the eyeshadow underneath. So that is pretty much gone. I'm just going back in with my crease brush, no additional shadow on it, and just kind of blending over that spot so you can't tell that anything happened. All right, so there is pretty much a full face of my favorite makeup techniques. I hope that this um, helped you out, maybe gave you some ideas for some new things to try with your makeup. Let me know down below, what is a makeup tip that completely transformed your makeup routine. I would love to know so that I can try it out for myself. 
But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to support my channel, you can check out the Patreon or the channel membership, which are linked below. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.